Hello everybody, and either welcome or welcome back to my channel, and if it isn't your first time here, it's probably been a while, because I've been busy in my first semester at Purdue University in Honors Engineering. And as you can tell by this slide, it's been a little chaotic, I've done a little bit. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through every class I went for at Purdue, basically what it is, the amount of credits it is, the amount of time it took outside and inside of the classroom, besides any studying for exams, because I'll go over exams separately, and then I'll go over my final grade in the class and basically giving everybody an idea of what the first semester of Purdue in honors engineering could possibly be for you. I know there's some classes that I didn't have that you would possibly go through in the first semester at Purdue, and I can go over a little bit of that, but this is my personal experience of what I went through. So the first class I'm going to go over is MA266 or Ordinary Differential Equations which is a three credit hour class, which is two and a half hours of class time. So realistically, the in-class time for this class is representative of the credits. And the rule is technically, I know you have one hour in a week in class means three hours out of class. So you would expect about nine hours out of class for this class times about a 15 hour week. So that's a lot of hours, but realistically, this class has about 60 to 70 hours of homework time. It's actually quite a bit for a math class to have this much homework. I had 36 homework assignments that were online going through a couple questions and filling in boxes on the program MyLab by Pearson. And then I also had written homework assignments that I had to go through problems in the book and write out. There was a lot of work that went into this class and just learning the material. It was a lot of difficult concepts that I hadn't really seen before and going through and just going, it's a longer process than you might have in a traditional say calculus class. And it's very different from the linear algebra I had beforehand in that it's less conceptual and it's more just going through and plugging in processes to different types of equations. Most people start in a calculus class and would see a similar time frame that it would take to have the class. But I know the exams for me, I had three exams, calculus classes. I'm pretty sure I have a similar amount of exams, but they're a lot harder than the exams I had. There isn't much of a curve for this class compared to other Purdue math classes, which have pretty substantial curves. And I saw that the exams had about 72% of the grade to the homework's 28, actually not about, that is exactly what it was. So the exams aren't as much of the grade as you would think for a college math class, but you really do have to prepare for them and know how all the processes work. And I actually ended up with an A minus in the class. I had a 83 on my first exam, a 79 on the second exam, and a 90 on the final. The final is worth the same amount as the two midterm exams. And I got almost every homework point. So it's really difficult in Purdue math classes, which are known for being hard because there are very few points you can actually miss, which is the difficulty. And you really have to focus on not making stupid mistakes because the tests are mostly multiple choice. So it can really cost you if you do make a mistake because that's just 10 points off your grade, which are really hard to get back. I know for me on the test, the difference for me between an A and an A minus was a couple dumb mistakes of maybe signs, or my interpretation of a question that makes it really hard. And that is what makes Purdue math difficult is that there are so few mistakes you can actually make to be able to succeed in the class. So moving on, we're gonna to go to engineering 161, which is the basic introduction to honors engineering class. It is brutal, it's, it's rough, it's not good. As, I, when you see online, if you're going into honors engineering at Purdue, you research and like, oh, engineering 161 and 160 are the worst classes, and you don't really believe it. Going through it, 161, it's bad. It's really bad. Run. But it's a gr great experience. You get to know people. I don't know. It's a four credit hour class with five and a half hours of class time. Technically, four of the hours are deemed lab time but it's not lab, it's just lecture with a different name. And for homework, I'm counting homework, actual homework, and the amount of time spent on projects. And there are over a 100 hours of homework in this class. There are three main projects, going back to my introduction slide, there is a building a catapult out of say popsicle sticks and straws. That doesn't take as much time. Then there is a coding project that's based on a reservoir water system, and you have to code a simulation of that. 
And then there is building a robot with a Lego Mindstorms kit to be able to have that cargo carrying system similar to a Mars rover. It is a lot of time on the homework itself. There are eight homework assignments. It starts out with like coding basics in Python and going through and just having test cases and coding out algorithms that you don't really learn. You kind of have to look things up on your own as you go. And then it transitioned into basic mechanics physics problems. They're not basic, they're extremely hard. And basically it's just, you go to office hours and that's how you know what you're doing. You struggle if you try to do this all on your own. For the first homework assignments, I tried to do a lot of it just on my own. And I spent maybe 15 to 20 hours on just a single homework assignment because I didn't know what was going on. You truly do need to get the help of others to be able to succeed in the class. And there are three exams in this class as well, but it's actually three midterms for this class that are each worth 12% of the grade. So that's the thing. Exams only make up 36% of the grade in this class. So it's not as difficult on being reliant on test, but it's hard just the amount of effort and work you have to put in. And it's extremely just gut-wrenching and draining of energy to go through this class and try to actually accomplish everything that needs to be done. And the point of a lot of it is it for it to not work. So you feel like you're spending all of this time going through just to, in the end, have most of it not work. For example, the catapult that I made, it worked kind of. And the robot that I made did about half of what it was supposed to. But it's all about what you learned from that experience and being able to write how you could improve and what worked and what didn't and just the whole process. Even with an 81 on the first two exams and with a curve on the second exam, I had an 85, I ended up with an A in the class. The thing with this class is you don't know your grade until the final grade is released. So don't actually try to calculate your grade because don't bother. It's just a random throw it into a hat and you pull out and there's a grade and it's a grade. Well, for me, it was great. For other people, maybe not. But the grade for this class actually does have a pretty high A rate compared to differential equations, about a third to 40% of the class gets an A in engineering 161 compared to the say 25% in differential equations. So as much as the class is just a mental struggle and they push you and push you and push you until you can't do anymore, the grade at the end is pretty representative of the work you did put in. Now on to COM 114, this is the basic communications class that they require. I forgot to put it here, but I did the honors section of this class. I would solely recommend it. It is not that much extra work. There were about six presentations in this class of the honors section, and it didn't add any extra work to be in the honors section compared to a regular section. And it was pretty simple. There were three credit hours, again, two and a half hours of class time. And for homework, I would say I put in 20 to 25 hours. There were 13 quizzes in this class that I would say, for me, I spent a little longer on it that you probably needed to. It took about an hour each. They're just online, open book. They're really simple. And then I'd say a few hours per each presentation just to prepare and get everything ready and just be able to actually know what you're talking about in the presentation. There are no exams for COM 114. It's just presentation ability and how are you able to just complete the exam, not the exam, the presentation and to be able to speak what you're actually talking about and feel prepared to go through the requirements that are given to you. And I pretty easily got an A in this class. That's pretty much the expectation. If you just do the work and have a solid idea of what your presentation is gonna be about, you will succeed in this class. So engineering 10301, I did an intro to research class. There's a lot of different types of this class, the 10301 classes, but I did intro to research. It's just a one credit hour seminar for 50 minutes that had five to 10 hours of homework and no exams with an easy A. But what I really took about this class that helped me a ton is you actually go for the basic life skills that you need to get a research position, which I actually have obtained a research position for the spring from this class. You learn how to make things such as a resume, cover letter, a LinkedIn page, and how to put it all together to truly go for a research opportunity, such as like interviewing with a professor and how to actually go through and get the position that you want. And a lot of students from this class do come out of it with a research position where otherwise they wouldn't even know where to start, where to look, and what programs are truly available to them. So I would recommend getting into an intro to research class if you are interested in research at a school, even if it's not Purdue, even though I'm doing Purdue specifically. 
I think research is super important and you should look into getting into it. Now, because I'm an honors, I have to take an honors seminar on HONR 9, 19901 class. I did a privacy seminar, basically just on the concept of privacy in society and how technology has evolved over time and throughout humans view technology and stuff like that. It's another one credit hour class. It's only for eight weeks, but it's for one and two thirds hours. There is a lecture time and a recitation time. Something, something I didn't talk about for comm is it's just lecture and research is just lecture. This one actually has a recitation where you just sit and you have a peer mentor for the first honor seminar class. They're basically in the recitation, they just go over assignments with you. And on homework, I spent about five to 10 hours in this class. And that was basically just made up of, there are two presentations that I had to do for my seminar. And most of the time was basically doing weekly readings to kind of get an idea of what we were gonna talk about in the class and then preparing for my part of the presentation. There are no exams for this class, but like I said, there are the presentations that you do have to be ready to present. And they are actually not in class live presentations. You just record them and send them. And it's actually, again, a pretty easy A. Honors seminars aren't that much work. They're basically just meant as a good idea to meet people and get an idea of the honors community at Purdue. Even though I believe, believe the intro to honors engineering class actually did have a way better baseline in getting to meet people because everybody is just struggling and they don't know what's going on. So you kind of just get that support network of other people to be able to actually complete the work. I say a hundred plus hours. It's probably a lot higher than that. For example, I spent 15 hours in one weekend on building a robot. And that was not even close to going into the amount of time I spent in that class. I do truly recommend it, but you will really not enjoy it while you're in it. So you'll think, why are you recommending this class if it absolutely sucks? You'll get a lot out of it, even though it's not fun at all. Sometimes you just kind of have to go through things to be able to progress yourself and socially to ultimately have a ton of struggle and you feel like you can't do it and it's just mentally exhausting. And to finish off the coding experience and math experience and engineering experience of my first semester, CS159 is an intro to the C programming language. My first semester was a lot of coding. You might not see this if you're doing, say, a chemistry class, which I came in to Purdue with credit for. But the chemistry class is actually pretty simple. The only problem is there is a three hour lab in the chemistry class, which takes up a lot of time. So I'm glad I didn't have to do that. And I went straight into CS159, the intro to C. It's again a three credit hour class with four and one thirds hours of work. You have two lectures that are an hour and 15 minutes. And then you have the kind of two hour lab period, which is basically just working on a code from the things you have learned either in the class that, the, that week or previously and just building off of everything you've learned. The problem is if you come into any coding experience, it is extremely slow. You don't get into things such as loops until like week four, no, not even week four. You get into like week six or seven and like if else statements are week like four or five. So it is very slow for somebody who has coding experience. So it is pretty simple if you're coming in with that. Now with that, my homework time for this class, about 20 to 30 hours of coding, which isn't a lot, but I also came in with a lot of experience. But if you have a lab group that doesn't have much coding experience, you will be spending more time because of having to do the lab for them because you have to get it done because there's no way they would do it. You have three lab groups, so you do rotate every four weeks so your experience could differ. My last lab group wasn't the same compared to like my first or second in the amount of coding experience. So I did have to do a little more near the end of the semester. And there are also three exams for this class. Again, it is two midterms and a final. Now, the reason everybody hates CS159 is because there isn't actually any coding on any of the exams. You're basically just a human compiler and you're going through and doing a ton of stupid, simple addition and multiplication and just running through loops a million times so you get to an answer. If you make one stupid mistake, you're probably not going to get it right. It's basically a ton of monotonous, just going through the human compiler and just, just run it, just do it. I actually, it's covered here by my picture, sorry, but I did end up with an A in this class. And just overall, this is a 15 credit semester. If I can do math, yep, six, 10, yeah. So I know differential equations, maybe can do addition, that's what CS159 is for. But I believe this is a pretty 
representative first semester for a Purdue student, if you replace differential equations with say Calc 1 or 2 or 3, and then CS 159, you may have chemistry and that's four credits, I believe. So that would raise that a little bit. But overall, I think that the first semester at Purdue is a lot of work, especially in honors engineering. It is a big adjustment to high school and you will have to work a lot more for it. But I believe that it is a great experience and the school truly does provide a, an ability to work towards the future in its first year engineering program, which isn't exactly the most helpful. For Engineering 161, you have to basically go to engineering your major sessions. If you're not in the honors engineering in 131, you have to go to a lot more engineering your major sessions and do more about them. And basically just explore different majors. If you don't know what you're going into, it's extremely helpful. But they also basically just go over slideshows of different majors and tell you what you can find in just a simple Google search. So I don't know how helpful that is. If your reason to go in the first year engineering program is to find yourself of what engineering major you want to do, you might not actually get that in those. But in the classes, it is pretty helpful. Like if you really struggle in CS159, you might not want to go in a major that's more coding specific. I actually didn't do a lot of the first year engineering requirements here. I did a lot of them from AP credit coming in, such as like a uh, written English or the calculus classes or chemistry. So this is basically just me trying to fill in a schedule of some of the requirements and just getting some of the credits. But I believe that you could succeed at Purdue. You got this. And if you're going somewhere else, this is probably still representative of similar things you would be doing. So I did hope you enjoy my overview of basically just what my first semester was about and what you could expect to experience if you have a similar case as me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out some of my other ones if you aren't in college and want to just hear about high school stuff. I have some about those and I have more about Purdue coming in the future. I'm on winter break, so I have some time to do things. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much.